Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand independent comics. I've seen it all in comics publishing, and I've just seen the thinking critical sources tell me hammer is falling on DC Comics video, and I'm going to tell you something. Uh, what he sounds says extremely credible. Uh, I'm sure his sources are good, uh, and the reason why is unless he's got some uh, incredibly elaborate hoax going, everything he describes sounds a lot like how business operates. Whether it's DC Comics, Marvel Comics, wh whatever the company is, he's got information from uh, somebody in the accounting department um, it, that basically describes massive, massive layoffs and cancellations coming for DC Comics and coming soon. Let's get into his video and we'll discuss it. Uh, before we do, make sure to subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, and give me a thumbs up when you like it. So here's what he has to say. Due to the lack of quality and overall dissatisfaction of DC Comics customers, I believe I have the answer. I have a source. Now, I've been talking to this person for a very long time. They're a viewer of the channel. And from the very beginning, they have presented themselves as someone that works in like the e accounting field. And they have stated multiple times that they have contacts within the Disney and Warner Brothers accounting departments. And this person with those contacts, when you have a contact in the accounting departments at um, a well-run company, um, that's very good information because it comes first from the numbers. Decisions come from numbers. First, an executive gathers the information. They look at the numbers. They make sure the numbers are correct. And then they make a decision. Uh, and then it's, it's execution. It's all follow through. So if you've got um, editorial contacts at DC, if you know an artist that's got um, other friends uh, who uh, work at DC, you know, even people in the marketing department and things like that, that's really all secondhand from um, the financial department. The accounting is the heart of it. If you are friends with the CEO and David Zaslov just told you in the Hamptons last weekend, hey, listen, I'm going to gut DC Comics and fix that thing, um, that's better information because that's the ultimate decision. But before a decision gets made, information gets gathered. This is where information is gathered from. And this gentleman uh, at Thinking Critical is plugged into that information source. And this person with those contacts has provided some insight regarding situations at Disney and Warner Brothers. I do not know the people in the accounting offices at Disney and Warner Brothers myself. So do take this with a grain of salt and understand I have not verified directly all the details that have been provided to me these are secondhand accounts. Obviously, right now, it's a little bit more. These are secondhand accounts, but um, what I'm telling you is everything he explains operationally means this. And he has no reason to make this up. He's a very credible channel. You should definitely subscribe to Thinking Critical. It covers a lot in comics. There's no reason to think that this information isn't accurate. It's, it's going to be a, a serious bloodbath at DC more exciting over at Warner Brothers as we're doing the merger. One of the things that you expect to happen during this merger is that essentially Discovery and the people that David Zaslav is comfortable with are going to slowly take over all the operations, all the support stuff going on behind the scenes, including accounting, are going to kind of be merged into what Discovery is doing. I imagine some parts of Warner Brothers will be moved in there, but a lot of those people just aren't going to have a job anymore. These So uh, what he's talking about has actually already been covered. Um aggressively and quickly uh, David Zaslov put in his uh, choice CFO candidate that stands for chief financial officer and that is what you think it is um, they control the money they control how you look at the value of the operation of what it is that's being done in a business uh, they do make decisions they're not going to make decisions uh, different from a chief executive officer but the idea is to really get your hands around the operations uh, and the costs at the business and no nonsense. That's what a CFO does. They yanked out the Warner Media CFO and put in their discovery guy who obviously Zaslov has a, a long relationship with. And this isn't necessarily because he had a problem with the Warner Media people. This is because he knows he needs to accomplish certain things and he needs a trusted person he can give things to. Like a hitman. These are called redundancies, and that's something that happens with business. In my the issue with redundancies, it goes without question. I mean, they already just laid off, what was it, 70 plus executives in the reality uh, programming department at HBO Max because they're going to bring in reality content 
from Discovery Plus, so they don't need executives producing reality content. There will be a overlap of things like that. With respect to DC, you're not going to see all these all these accounting people from DC Comics need to be let go because uh, they already had accounting people at Discovery. And the reason why is it, it's sort of irrelevant. There's a different. It's, it's bookkeeping at DC Comics. There's no strategic uh, executive financial team planning acquisitions and re- return on capital investments and things like that going on at DC Comics. So there are going to be layoffs. And, you know, even, for example, um, they were making decision at Warner Brothers Discovery, are they going to keep, um, which of which of their uh, real estate buildings are going to keep? They're going to keep uh, the Time Warner building and they're going to let go. I mean, they have extra buildings laying around. So they're going to get rid of entire uh, real estate footprints like that, buildings. Uh, so of course there are going to be people that are, are shaken loose, but but this is what this is really about is um, this is really about massive changes coming quickly at DC because they're asking all the questions that you'd need to ask um, the, this the executive and the financial team at from over from the Discovery Group. Hey, how are you guys operating? Why are you guys operating that way? This source is telling me that they are getting to DC Comics a lot faster than I thought they would. I knew eventually they would get to DC and be like, hey, what's going on here? Why aren't you making more money? Tell us exactly what the state of DC Comics is. And apparently that has already happened. This is very interesting news and certainly could explain why DC Comics are all of a sudden bringing in some more high-end talent that could actually generate some buzz and excitement within DC Comics. My so- I did a video recently uh, back to the 1990s um, DC Comics, you know, doing the, the, they announced the Spawn Batman crossover uh, finally coming out. They announced uh, the new Wildcat series. And, um, you know, they look at stuff like this. They look at like, all right, hey, we want, we need to see that we're going to make some money. Just like when um, the woke people are in charge, people start to self-censor because they know if they say something or they say this or they say that in Nick's company, uh, you're going to get attacked for it or whatever it is. Now uh, the DC people know, like uh, there are people looking at your financials, and they are going to be asking questions, and you're going to need to have some interesting and compelling answers, um, because they're they're looking at the history for the last thirty years at DC Comics, trying to see you know what is going on there operationally, and why are you doing these things? It's been a joke really since the 1970s about DC Comics uh, not making money. They talk about things like breaking even. Like, oh, well, we're breaking even on this title, but not on that title. There's no breaking even at DC Comics. You know, some of the titles sort of do okay, but but a lot of them don't. And the issue is when they say that certain titles break even, this is something you're talking about a couple of years ago when they had the first um, round of layoffs after the AT&T acquisition at DC. They were saying, well, we have several titles that break even. That was something Jim Lee was saying. They're not breaking even. There are multiple ways to talk about uh, breaking even. You know, the first way is profit and loss on direct investment in producing that one extra title. So it's title number 106. You know, it's one uh, title number 107. You're producing issue 107. Fine. You're going to say, okay, well, how much is your editorial cost for all of that? How much are you spending to produce that? Okay. So then you're, you're, you're taking out your direct costs related to the re- revenue generated from that title. Uh, And now you're saying, oh, well, it broke even. It's like, well, yeah, sure, it broke even, maybe even on a gross profit basis. But what about a net profit basis when you start looking at things like the overhead, the expense? Because you have to allocate overhead. You pay salaries for people, benefits, expenses, investments in things. So you start looking at what the the overhead is allocated on a per title basis. None of this stuff is making money. Maybe there's there's, there's a movie that comes out and they sell a, a ton of extra... Batman uh, graphic novels, and maybe they're making some money on Batman, some money, sort of. But when you look at, like, what do you think they're paying all of these people, and, and they pay for the building and all these expenses, there's no break even over there. That's going to change. Source tells me the Discovery Accounting Office, not David Zaslov directly, asked for a management report to be prepared for all print DC comics in all formats, allocating total overhead to each book title to see which were the winners and losers. This request would have went directly to the Warner Brothers accounting office that has been established and has all the historical data regarding this. This When you're allocating expenses, super easy. It's, all right, we produce these 30 titles. We produce these 100 titles, let's say this month. Here's 100 titles. Fine. 
How much do you spend for rent, salary, editorial, all the things that it took to create an office to produce that content? That's the overhead. And then the direct expenses, what did you pay for an artist, uh, for a writer, for other creators to put that specific issue together? And then you just, you do the direct expense and you do the overhead and the alloc- the overhead is allocated on an even basis. That's, it's just black and white, it's straight numbers. Anybody could do the numbers. The thing is though, people haven't really been looking closely at those numbers of the allocate overhead and they realize, wait a minute, why does it cost us, you know, God knows how much, $30,000 in overhead to produce one issue of something that then costs whatever, another $30,000 uh, to produce just an editorial such that the thing would have to sell $100,000 in revenue or something to break even. The numbers are not gonna look good. This is terrible, terrible news for Jim Lee, Marie Jabbins, and the rest of the team behind DC Comics. Their sales have been in the toilet for months upon months. We've documented it heavily right here on the channel. In fact, recently, over half of all the comic books that they published in July of 2022 didn't even make it into the top 100. It's something I've never seen before when it comes to DC Comics sales, and I'm not sure if it's ever happened, and if it has happened, how long ago it was. DC Comics have certainly had some down periods in the market, and they are certainly, outside of Batman, in a big time down period right now. This is terrible. The top 100 is a ranking of sales on a per title basis. There is no more business in periodical comics. Not really. I mean, there's crowdfunding you can do. They sell some copies um, to the direct market, um, and that's great. They sell some copies of, of periodicals in, in, in other markets here and there. They have foreign licensing deals. It keeps the properties alive, in quotes. But ultimately, even the, being in the top 100 isn't significant. It's it's not big numbers. You know, when you're at number you know one through 10, Spawn Universe recently sold, uh, number one, sold 500,000 copies. That's fantastic, but but normally you know things don't sell that quantity. These things aren't aren't doing any kind of reasonable numbers. And your Suicide Squad Blaze number three, you know, at uh, one hundred and eighty nine on the top sales charts, that's probably less than ten thousand copies. So so the loss on something like that is probably fifty grand. I'm just giving you rough numbers, but it's not good. It's it's not at all good. So. What could DC Comics do? Let me know what you think in the comments below, what you think they'll do about all this. I think it's pretty obvious they're going to certainly have layoffs. They'll cancel a number of titles. You know that from um, Zavzlov history with Killing Batgirl, uh, but also killing all sorts of animated shows and pulling 200 episodes of Sesame Street. There's no um, nervousness uh, at, at Warner Brothers Discovery about uh, canceling titles. Um and, and shaking up uh, creators' feelings. So they'll do that. They're running everything like a business. And, and it's to their advantage, too, because ultimately, you know, they're at least treating everybody the same. They're saying, hey, it's all just business. We're trying to make money. I think they're going to do a lot in the way of graphic novels. I think periodicals are going to get phased out. I, something like this, you would normally say over a couple of years, except <laughs> they don't seem like they like waiting a couple of years to get things done. You know, so the, you're looking at um, maybe maybe three to six months, uh, but but why would they not uh, focus on individual graphic novels that seem to have a longer shelf life, more distribution opportunities, and you can easily do a self-contained story. It also gets you away from the continuity problems that you know all of this stuff just gets constantly rebooted and is a mess. At least at least a self-contained story in a graphic novel makes some sense. Of course, I'm going to give you a link so you can hear the entire video of um, Thinking Critical Sources Tell Me the Hammer is Falling on DC Comics. Definitely check it out. Subscribe to their channel. While you're at it, subscribe to my channel. Click the bell for notifications. And I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.